Hi everyone and welcome to a new episode of Diagnose Dan. Last week I misdiagnosed the car and I actually replaced the part, an expensive part, that didn't fix the problem. The reason my scan tool was lying to me, it was actually showing me the wrong data leading me to replace the wrong part. So in this video we're going to compare four aftermarket scan tools, a Hella Goodman, a Snap-on, a Launch and an Auto to the original factory tool and we're going to figure out which scan tool is lying to us and which scan tool, if any, is telling us the truth. So let's diagnose this together. Last week I was diagnosing a P20EE code on a quite recent Citroën Berlingo diesel. Now it wasn't this exact van, but a van just like this one. Now fortunately, for the purpose of this video, my local dealership was kind enough to lend me their service van. Now the P20EE code is an SCR catalyst in efficiency code. And that means there are potentially too much NOx, so harmful gases coming out of the exhaust. And that means there's something wrong with our after treatment or at blue system. The original van is fixed now and I traced it down to being a very intermittent faulty at blue injector. But before I came to that conclusion, I actually replaced this very expensive knock sensor because it was giving me very strange readings in scan data and I was thinking, hey, that can't be right. So I ordered a new one, replaced it, but after I replaced it with a brand new one, it was still showing me very strange readings, which I wasn't expecting. Now in the end, it turned out that my scan tool was lying to me and showing me wrong data. Now I know a lot of you guys in the aftermarket are using one of these scan tools, so hopefully this video can prevent you from making the same expensive mistake that I made. A NOx sensor can measure the amount of NOx, so harmful gases, in the exhaust. And it shows this to us in parts per million, yeah you heard me right, parts per million. So it can sniff out a NOx particle between a million other particles in the exhaust gases. So it's a very sensitive device and it even has got its own control unit. Now there isn't a lot you can measure on a NOx sensor so the most straightforward thing you can do is take a look at scan data. Now that's exactly what I did and that led me to replace this perfectly fine NOx sensor. Now in this video we're going to compare the NOx sensor scan data of these four aftermarket scan tools and compare them to the original data provided by the original factory scan tool, the Diac Box. Now as a diagnostician, you need to be able to trust your scan tool and that's why it's quite shocking. It's actually very, very bad, but only one, only one of these four aftermarket scan tools is going to show us the right scan data. Now will it be the Autel, the Launch, the Hella Goodman, or the snap-on. Now before we continue with this video and take a look at scan data and the real thing, I want you to have a look at a small clip of one of my DDTSB training videos on SCR systems. I mean it's only a small clip from a bigger series, but after seeing this clip you will have somewhat of an understanding of how the SCR system operates and then you will fully understand the importance of the NOx sensor. During the combustion process, NOx is formed. Now NOx is something we don't like coming out of our tailpipes. And that's why manufacturers do as much as they can to reduce the amount of NOx coming out of the exhaust. And that's where the SCR comes in. The purpose of the SCR is to reduce the amount of NOx particles coming from the engine before it enters the atmosphere. Now a good working SCR system should reduce the amount of NOx particles by approximately 90%. That means that from every 10 NOx particles coming from the engine, only one should be able to make it out of the exhaust. Now how does the SCR system achieve the reduction of NOx? Now this all happens within the SCR catalyst. Within the SCR catalyst, are elements that when exposed to ammonia will start a chemical reaction that will drastically reduce the amount of NOx particles. Now to start this chemical reaction we need ammonia and therefore we need AdBlue. Through an AdBlue tank and an AdBlue line the AdBlue is then injected through an AdBlue injector into the hot exhaust. 
When the AdBlue is injected into the hot exhaust, it forms ammonia. In the exhaust, the ammonia is mixed with the exhaust gases through a mixer plate before it enters the SCR catalyst. Within the catalyst, it starts a chemical reaction that will reduce the amount of NOx particles for about 90%. Now let's take a look at this picture. In this picture we can see we've got two NOx sensors. An upstream NOx sensor that measures the amount of NOx coming directly out of the engine. And it sends this information directly to the engine control module. We also have got a second downstream NOx sensor that measures the amount of NOx going out of the tailpipe. In this case I also hooked up a scan tool and on the scan tool I selected the data pits for both NOx sensors. I also hooked up a gas analyzer that's capable of reading NOx. In this case there are 400 parts per million coming out of the engine and 400 parts per million going out of the exhaust. And this number is being confirmed by our gas analyzer. So right now the system is doing nothing, no reduction. Right now the system is warming up and we're not injecting AdBlue. When the system is not at operating temperature or when we're not injecting AdBlue, there's no chemical reaction, so no reduction. So 400 in, 400 out, the system isn't doing anything. Now let's take a look at the next picture. We see 400 parts per million coming out of the exhaust again. Now those 400 parts per million, we totally made it up. We used perfectly round numbers just for the purpose of this video. You could see different numbers and that could still be perfectly fine. Right now the system has warmed up we're at operating temperature, we are driving and injecting at blue. So there's a chemical process happening in the SCR CAD and we see only 40 parts per million coming out of the tailpipe. So that's a perfect 90% reduction. This is a perfectly working system. Now that 90% is just a target value. The idea is you should see a significant drop in NOx emissions leaving the exhaust. Now the 40 parts per million are confirmed by our gas analyzer. And in this picture we are using a stationary gas analyzer, but in real life this should be a mobile device because this test can only be performed while driving the car. Now let's take a quick look at the SCR system on this vehicle. Now this engine is going to produce NOx. Now that NOx is going to flow with the exhaust gases into the exhaust. Now in the beginning of the exhaust we've got an AdBlue injector and through an AdBlue line that injector is connected to the AdBlue tank. When the injector opens it sprays AdBlue into the hot exhaust. Because of the exhaust being hot that AdBlue evaporates and forms ammonia. That ammonia then mixes with the exhaust gases and ends up in the SCR catalyst. On this particular model the SCR catalyst and the DPF are in one housing. In front we've got the SCR catalyst and behind that, in between that point and that point, but in between the pressure differential sensor, we've got the DPF filter. Inside the SCR catalyst, we've got a chemical reaction with the ammonia that significantly reduces the amount of NOx. Now whether that process was successful or not is measured and monitored by a NOx sensor that's located behind the SCR catalyst. When the NOx sensor behind the SCR catalyst is showing much higher numbers than was to be expected, eventually a P2EE code will be set. Now this could mean two things. First, our process was inefficient and not enough NOx was reduced for whatever reason. Second, we could have a faulty NOx sensor that is showing us the wrong values. You can actually check that second NOx sensor by hooking up a gas analyzer to the tailpipe that's capable of reading NOx concentrations. The NOx coming from the tailpipe and the readings from that second sensor should match because nothing happens to the NOx concentrations anymore after the SCR CAD. But in my case the readings from the NOx sensor were so unbelievably high that even if the entire system wasn't working, there was no way that the engine could produce those amounts of NOx. So in my head, there was only one conclusion. We had a faulty NOx sensor. So let's start the test. We're going to take the scan tools one by one, select the same car, select the same system, and we're gonna simulate a driving test. 
So I'm gonna let the car idle, let it warm up, and once it's warm, I'm gonna put it off the ground and we're going to simulate a rapid acceleration. So I'm gonna put it in fifth gear and hit the throttle. Now, during this rapid acceleration, we're going to take a look at the NOx concentration, the maximum NOx concentration that each scan tool is showing, and we're going to compare that to the factory scan tool. Now let's start by using the snap-on. We're actually driving on the lift right now. We're driving about 50 kilometers per hour. I had to turn off the traction control, which you can turn off right there, or else we can't accelerate on the lift. By the way, those lights aren't really flickering. That's just the shutter speed of the camera. We're in fifth gear and I've got the snap-on tool hooked up. Now, this particular tool is actually in Dutch, but I selected two data pits. The upper one being the engine RPM and the lower one being the NOx concentration of the downstream NOx sensor. Now you can see the car is idling, but it's already showing us NOx concentrations of over 3,000 parts per million, which I can already tell you is unbelievably high. Now let's accelerate. And you can see it was showing us NOx concentrations of well over 5,000 parts per million. Now let's compare that to the next tool. Same test, but this time we hooked up the launch scan tool. Again, I selected two data pits, the upper one being the engine speed and the lower one, the NOx concentration of the downstream NOx sensor. Again, showing us very high numbers at idle of well over 4,000 parts per million. Now let's accelerate. And again, numbers of well over 5,000 parts per per million. Let's try the next tool. First we tried Snap-on, which is an American tool, and then we tried Launch, which is a Chinese tool, and now we're going to try Hella Goodman, which is a European tool. Again, select the two data pits, and we have got the laptop version of Hella Goodman, and the upper one being the engine RPM, and the lower one, the downstream NOx concentration. Again, very similar to the other ones, numbers of over 4,000 parts per million at idle. Now let's accelerate. And again, numbers of well over 5,000, even 6,000 parts per million. Now let's try the final aftermarket scan tool of today, the Autel. Now again, select the two data pits, the uh, engine RPM and the downstream NOx concentration. Now already you can see we've got a number that's about 10 times lower than the other tools were showing us. And this is something I would expect to see. Now let's accelerate. And you can see that the numbers are much, much lower. Now finally, the original Diag Box factory scan tool. Again, I select the two data pits. I hope you guys can see this. Um, the upper one being the engine RPM and the lower one being the downstream NOx concentration. Showing us very similar numbers to what the auto was showing us. Now let's accelerate And again, we are seeing very low numbers, just like the auto. So in this case, the only aftermarket scan tool that's showing us the right data is the auto. Now, when I was diagnosing the original car, I was actually using a snap-on scan tool. And now that you know what to expect, when I was looking at those high NOx concentrations, especially at idle, I was thinking, hey, this can't be right. I actually did recheck it with another scan tool, but I used the launch scan tool that was showing me the exact same thing. So I confirmed it with two scan tools, so I was thinking this must be a bad NOx sensor. It wasn't until after I had replaced it with a brand new one, I still had the high numbers, I started digging deeper, and I found out it was actually a fault in my scan tools. Now, does this mean that the auto is a better scan tool than the other scan tools we've tested today? Well, absolutely not. Today, it was the auto that was right, but tomorrow, it might be another scan tool on a different brand, on a different model, or vice versa. It's just something you need to keep in mind when you're working with aftermarket scan tools. I've even seen it happen with factory scan tools, but then it mostly happens on the newest models, which software is still under development. Now, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe to my channel, and when you hit the little bell, you will get a notification each time I upload a new video. And remember, diagnose then, fix it again. See you next time, guys.